how to get your reader magnet onto BookFunnel. First, I want to reiterate that before you do any of the things that we're going to discuss, before you get a BookFunnel account, before you try to attempt any of these things, you must write your book. And if you've already written your book, you must write your, your lead magnet. If you haven't written your main book yet in your main series, then write your reader magnet first. You, then you can go through these steps, then you can write your main book. I did a whole video breaking down whether or not you should write your book or your reader magnet first. If you haven't watched that yet and you think that might be beneficial, go ahead and check that out. But the bottom line is, if you haven't started your main book yet, write your reader magnet first. If you've already started your main book, finish that, then go to your reader magnet. Okay, number two, there is a difference between lead magnets and reader magnets. I did a whole nother separate video on that. I'm not gonna go into it in depth here, but what you're gonna see is I'm gonna show the advanced strategy here for a second, just a quick review. And as I'm going through that, you're gonna see a lead magnet and a reader magnet. Now semantically they're both reader magnets but one is being used for leads who have never read my stuff before and the other is used for readers who have and that's where the distinction comes in so let's get right into this review if you recall during the series we've been talking about the strategy where if you are able to and you have time money and effort to write more than one reader magnet then you would put the first one up on Amazon and then you would put the second one up on BookFunnel. Now, all we're gonna mainly talk about today is BookFunnel, but I wanna reemphasize that if you have made the first reader magnet, while you're still gonna have a BookFunnel for it, you're gonna put it up at Amazon as well. And the reason we do that is because Amazon has the majority of the market share when it comes to ebook readers. And so we want all of that traffic Imagine it, it was a lake that had fish and your book is your net. You want to cast your net where you're going to catch the most fish. That would be Amazon. <clears throat> for those of you who only have one reader magnet, you're going to forego this step for many reasons and you're just going to go to the next step. But for those of you that did do this step, once your readers read through this book, the lead magnet, they will become readers when they click on the link and they see this page which was made by book funnel this is the true reader magnet because if they read through the first book this book and then they clicked on the link and they give you they give you their email address when they when they press this button then now they are a reader because they've read your stuff they know who you are and they liked it so much they gave you their email for it so now it's no longer a lead magnet, it is a reader magnet. <clears throat> now for those of you who only have one book, that's fine, this is gonna serve as both your reader magnet and your lead magnet. And I'm gonna show you how to create a page just like this right now. <laughs> In a second, because the first thing I wanted to show you uh, is this video right here. And actually I'm gonna go to display It's like my microphone got turned off. I don't know what's going on here. There we go. Okay, microphone is on. Should be working. Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna go here. And I'm just gonna bring your attention. I'm on the 20 books to 50K YouTube page. And I'm particularly on, you can look this up, Vegas 2022, day three, go direct with Book Funnel. The reason why I selected this is because Damon Courtney is the creator and, and founder of BookFunnel. And he gives a really great, pre he's given many great presentations on 20 books to 50K. This is the most recent one that he gave and it's really great and it emphasizes all the ways you can use BookFunnel now to go direct. We're not going to get into that, but... I'm bringing this up for two reasons. We're, today we're talking about BookFunnel. If you want the most 
recent relevant information that I have as of the making of this video, I would point you to this, this presentation that Damon gave. And I would also say that um, I would look for his other stuff that he's given on not just 20 books to 50K, but um, he's been interviewed by several other podcasts. But the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention today also is because when I made the references and resources video, this I had not yet seen this and it wasn't out. So now you guys have that at your disposal. Now let's jump into BookFunnel proper and discuss it. When you first come on BookFunnel, this is the page that you're going to see. And it's at bookfunnel.com. <coughs> I'm not going to go over all the features and tools. I trust that you will educate yourselves accordingly. And I trust that you can read through all of this. The part that I will bring your attention to is the pricing plans. I'm not going to go through all of these. I would, I would say take a look and see what you get from these, but my recommendation for everyone, whether you're just starting out or you're advanced, is to just stick with the mid-list author. And if anything, get the $50 a year add-on, okay? Um, yes, you can go monthly if you want to test it out for a few months. I personally think it's such a great tool that you don't even need to do that. I would just jump right into the annual pricing. It's less than $9 a month, and it's $8.33 a month, and you get all of these features that are so critical to your business, super critical, that I would it would it would be a shame if you didn't use them. <clears throat> and this this add-on here is basically what it allows you to do is when someone gives you clicks on this link and gives you their email, it will directly input that email and information into your CRM. If not, you have to do it manually, which is not difficult. I'll tell you, I have been doing it for a few months now. It's not difficult, but at some point when you're getting them all the time and, and you know, maybe you, you download one day and you put it in and then like later on there's more. At some point, it just makes more sense to pay the extra money and then that way it's taken care of for the rest of the year. But my recommendation would be this. I don't, it's not that I don't think this one is worth it, but if you've already written your reader magnet, you're going to, you're going to have to use this one to get the, to use the strategy that I'm explaining to everybody, but also to use book funnel to its fullest potential. And then the reason why I don't recommend this higher one, at least for beginners. And I, I would consider myself a beginner in the sense that I haven't used BookFunnel enough and I don't have a big enough mailing list to warrant using this. And I, I would probably waste some of the best features because I wouldn't have any clue how to use them or the bandwidth uh, to, to learn it or, or require it. So until you get to a, a crazy level, I, I, you know, to each their own, I would just recommend sticking with the mid-tier. Once you sign up, uh, you'll get an, an author dashboard. I'll show you that in a second. But the first thing you do after you sign up is you go to your manuscript. This here is the manuscript for... <clears throat> it's the manuscript for this book, The Hidden Power. Here's The Hidden Power, as you can see, okay? And then this... I'm, I'm on Google Docs right now. You may have some other... Word processor program, doesn't matter which one you use. The main thing is you want to download a copy of it. I think you can do Word, but uh, for this example, we're going to use PDF. We'll download the PDF. It's going to take a minute. Again, I had to re-record this multiple times, so I know it's going to take a minute. My, my system takes however long. And while, there we go. While we're waiting for that to download... Now we will go into the book funnel dashboard and where, where you're going to go first, you won't have any of this yet. This is your dashboard. I'm not going to go over all of these different items. There are plenty of other channels that have covered this 
and I do highly recommend that you utilize these, especially group promos. However, that's not the purpose of today's video. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take your book, your reader magnet, and turn it into a book. <clears throat> and the first thing we're gonna do, I have to do a third test because I've, I've had to re-record this video so many times. To add a new book to your uh, books section, you can go to add new over here and you do add new book or you can go to action under books and you can click add new book. And then when you do that, you'll be prompted here. You put the title. We're just going to put test. I'm going to put test three because this is the third damn time I'm doing this. And then I'm going to, this label can be whatever. So we'll put whatever. And then for the, oh, you want to select what kind of book this is. And you can't proceed if you don't. To me, this isn't very, this is good for you to remember. Like you may look back months from now when you have multiple reader magnets out and say, wait, did I give the excerpt of that? Or was it a novella? This is how you kind of differentiate, okay? For me, I would just put novella. You could put short story. You, you could put a lot of things, but I just put novella. And then for the series, I have my Power Prequel series for Realm Wars, which is this book, and it's in this book and the third book. And then I also have the main series, Realm Wars, which <coughs> if you go to my Amazon page, that's the first book in the Realm Wars series. And then... And then I have also started a Realm Wars short story anthology that I'm giving out to my newsletter people. So those books get added on to here. But it, my point is, is that you can create a series. We're going to use test. I'm going to put volume three. This is the third damn test I've done. And then for tagline, I'll just show you what I would have done if this was my, my book. Go back here. I would just take this information that I had in here. I would use that to, now actually this was the tagline. So I'll put the tagline in there. The book description is down here. There, the, there's an option to put note to readers. And for other kind of reader magnets, you'll probably use this. But for this particular scenario where it's a lead magnet for a prequel series leading into your main book, I don't see many reasons why you would need to. You might want to, but you don't have to, and you don't need to. Lastly, you can select if you want to include this special Mobi format. I'm going to click yes. You don't have to. Um, it, I don't think it hurts. <clears throat> now that the book is created, you got to do two things in order to create a landing page for that book. Okay? Now you have to give it a cover, which we're going to use this cover right here. It's a cover to one of the books that I gave out for my uh, holiday anthology book. It's called Resolutions. It's about a bounty hunter who decides not to be violent anymore but can't stick to his resolution. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then now we have to upload the book file. Now, we're going to just upload one, which is the one that we downloaded when we were in here, remember we downloaded this. Well, now we're uploading that PDF to the book file. You can also upload Mobis and EPUBs. Now, I'm not going to go through how you get those. There are converters out there. I personally use draft to digital to get my EPUB and my Mobi version. But for the purposes of this video, to make it like as short and succinct as possible, we're going to stick with this. So, but I would highly recommend that you upload all three formats so that readers can choose which format they prefer to download. And then the other thing is you'll find out later when we do a newsletter and subscriber tracking that depending on what type of file they download, you can track your users who do PDF versus Mobi versus Kindle. You can kind of separate them and see who's using what. All right.
So we'll consider this is done. You can put watermarks and stuff like that on here. We're not going to do that today. And it's not recommended for this strategy that we're discussing. But I just want to let you know you can do that. Uh, and then now this is ready. This book is ready. It's got content. It's got a cover. And a quick note on covers. You don't have to have it as good as this cover. But you want to have, especially if you're going to do book promos with it and you're going to put it up on Amazon, you want a cover that's going to attract readers. If you put some sketch on there that you drew, you might get some people who... who who look at it and check it out, but it won't, you won't get as many people as if you put something on there that looks more professional and the closer to prof And I'm not saying my book covers are great, but they're close that they're much closer to that. They're professional is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> and then once you're here and you've got your book cover and your files uploaded now, now you get to make the landing page. So essentially, we've got the book, but now we need to create the page that looks like this for BookFunnel. And how do we do that? Well, we can either go to Add New and then do Landing Page, or we select Landing Pages and then go to Action, Add New Landing Page. Then from there, we're going to select our test. Uh, let's see. Yep, I think this is it. Oh, whatever. Yeah, remember we put whatever? So there we go, whatever. And then the key thing for this is you want to select the top option. There's reasons you would use these other two for other, other situations. For the strategy we are doing, select the top option. An email sign-up page to collect new readers. That's what you're doing. That's the main point of this whole process and strategy is to get new readers. And then the reader is required to join my list in order to receive the book. Yes. Those are two critical components. You must make sure that those are selected. And just so you know, they're pre-selected when you start. So it's not very hard to get them there. Then from there, you create the landing page. <coughs> and then you're going to name this um, whatever you want. I'm going to put test three and then I'll put social. And the reason why I'm putting social is... Let's say I wanted to I wanted to see where the majority of my leads were coming from. I could I could create a link a page that looks like this that I only send out to my Instagram and my Facebook and Pinterest and all those things. And what that would allow me to do is track uh the ones that came from social, whereas let's say I made another landing page that was called Amazon. Then it would track just the ones that are coming from here or wh wherever you're getting your stuff from. You might, for example, I think one that I have, sorry, is a website. Website. So anybody who goes on the Story Ninja's website and downloads, they're going to have a different like marker so that I can track, okay, this is how many people came from the website. This is how many people came from book promotions. This is how many people came from social media and so forth and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, you can put expirations and download limits. I would not do that for this strategy. This strategy is very basic. You want this uh, selected reader must sign up for a list to get the book. And then, and then you're done. Now, I, I would finish this, though, by saying you want to go one more step and you want to change the landing page settings. And I'll show you what I mean. If we preview this, this is the default setting. It's in this white kind of stormtroopery looking color scheme. I like it. It's very clean, but I don't think it fits my book as well, my books as well as the darker theme because I'm trying to go for realms and space opera. I want it to have this darker theme. Okay. And to me, this looks better. So I will 
<clears throat> go into the page theme, check solid black, and then put blue for the accent color. And then what you'll see, this is, it, it won't appear like this. It'll, it'll still appear large like that. It's just uh, when you're in the, the creation stage, it sometimes glitches like that. But this is the theme that I want. I want it to look more like this. To me, this will match that better. And so, <clears throat> so then all I do is once I get that set up, I click Save Page. <clears throat> there are a lot of different things you can change here to adjust. They're not necessary. Those are entirely up to you. For the first one, I would say just leave things at default so that you can get it out there as quickly as possible. Don't overthink it. Just leave it at default if you're not sure and go. All right. Now that that's done, we now have the link that we can give to our prospective leads. Either link works. You can use the short link or this one. I prefer the short links, but they're not necessary. And then wherever you paste them, they'll go. So let's say I put that in Facebook. It, as a post, it would come up as a link to this. If I put it, um, let's see. <coughs> I, showed, I showed you guys this before, but if I switch to my author page, switch to my author page, okay. If I switch to my author page, you will see that in my link tree, I have a link to this book right here. This is the same book that, that, that this is, okay? But it's the book funnel version. I could have just as easily taken this one that we created right here and put that in my link tree if I wanted to. And I would recommend that, that you do that is put whatever book or whatever reader magnet you want um, in all your various social medias where people can click on it kind of like this. And that's also why I recommend getting Linktree because you can post links to all the stuff that you do. <clears throat> we'll exit out of these. Exit out of that. Okay. Now the last thing that I... I'm going to do all right so that that we now we've finished on how to get your book into book funnel the last thing I'm going to talk about is to uh, again this is this is more uh, extra credit so to speak but once you do publish your main book so I'll go back to my main book once you publish your main book and someone buys it okay someone buys this, then what you want them to do is when they're done with this book, or maybe maybe it's this book and then you have a second book and a third book, whenever they get to the last book of the series, or maybe even at the end of each book, if you have the time and effort for it, you want to put in a reader magnet. Now, this is an advanced strategy and I'm not saying you have to do this, but if you did, what it would allow you to do is it would allow you to track your reader clip. Okay, how fast do readers read your books? I have found that it takes them about a week and a half to two weeks to read my books. Okay, and that's good for me to know because that lets me kind of gauge like what, how often I need to be creating materials and how long they should be and things, things of that nature. The other thing that makes that important is you might say, wait a minute, Josh. Are you saying at the end of my 60,000 word novel, are you telling me that now I have to write another 20,000, 10 to 20,000 word novella? No, absolutely not. You, once you have created these initial reader magnets, the, then you don't have to do that again unless you decide to. But the new the reader magnets I'm talking about that they would use click on after they've finished reading your book those are 
they're smaller. They're like maybe a thousand words or two thousand words. They're short stories. They're cut scenes. They're deleted scenes, and they're great for building a fan base. Fans love these things. And the other thing is <clears throat> that they help. Like I was saying before, they help you track and keep your readers engaged. They help you track where where people are in the process. This is great for building beta readers, arc teams, all that stuff. And so what I have is I have a list of about uh, 20 different ideas that you could use to put at the end of your main books so that you can implement that strategy. And as you can see, here's the example, top 10 list from one of your characters. So the, let's go back to mine. That's Dash. She's the main character in my main series. Maybe I... Use, would use this and I would write a reader magnet that was 1,000 to 2,000 words that was Dash writing a top 10 list of her favorite video games that she ever played because she's a video game player or favorite foods that she likes from each of the, the different quadrants, whatever it is. And then I've given you what the pricing structure might be or when you might use it like for a Patreon subscription, what type of fans it'll be good for, where you would put it best at the end of any book, see, and things of that nature. So I've really put some thought into this and I made this, I, to be fair, <coughs> when I, I initially made this for me and then as I was going on creating this series about how to do the, uh, create a, a reader magnet for science fiction and fantasy, I thought to myself, well, if I already created this document, I should share it with everybody else. Because then they don't have to do all that. Because it took me a while to think of all this. And don't get me wrong. Some of these ideas came from other people. It's not like they're novel or, or trailblazing in, in any sense. They're things that you could probably come up with. But what I did was these were all the ideas that I found through the hundreds of hours of materials that I looked through while researching how to do a reader magnet. So instead of you having to go out and figure all that out. I have distilled all that information and put it into a one-stop shop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link to that book. Or it's more, this is really more like a list. It's not a book. Uh, in the description down below. So if you're interested, go ahead and click on that. And then you can use that. But uh, just, so you, just so you can see, the, the first three that, oh shoot, here we go. So top 10 list from one of your characters, a poetry or diary writing from a character, or a how-to guide from a character. Here you go, travel guide, map for your world. And there are a lot more. So that's just to wet your palate. And then if you want to get some more, go ahead and click on the link below. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, go ahead and click uh, like. If, uh, if you know somebody that could benefit from this information, go ahead and share it with them. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so that you can get more information on how to create science fiction reader magnet to build your mailing list and also just how to do indie publishing in general. And then, um, and then in the, you know, as we go on in these episodes, we'll talk more in depth on the process as it goes forward in terms of uh, what are the steps, how you do an onboarding sequence, and build your newsletter and things of that nature. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Josh Coker, a.k.a. Joshmas Prime. Take it easy.